Here is a short story entitled Half a Day by Nagid Mafuz. But first, let us talk about local color. It is defined as the use of regional detail in literary or an artistic work. For example, in the play that you read in your grade 7, I Shall Have Other Birthdays, the author made use of words like dulang, paminggalan, kondiman, buyo, ale, and expressions such as tao po and pwe. These are not English words, but the author, in his creativity, deliberately chose to use them instead of their English translation in order to display an authentic Filipino culture in his masterpiece. In the scenes, The Adventure of Tom Sawyer 2, Mark Twain, the author, purposely misspelled most of Jim's lines in order for the readers to hear his authentic African dialect. Here is one of Jim's lines in the novel. Hen, Mars Tom. Oh, my sis, she told me I got to go and get this water and stop fooling around with anybody. Well, if you're going to translate it in proper English, here it goes. I can't, Mars Tom. Old miss, she told me I got to go and get this water and stop fooling around with anybody. Vocabulary time! Before we proceed with the summary of the story, you were asked to look for several words used in the short story. However, here are the words and their meanings as they were used in the story. 1. Tarbush. It is also spelled as T-A-R-B-U-S-H. It is a close-fitting, flat-topped, brimless hat shape like a truncated comb. It is made of felt or cloth with a silk tassel and is worn especially by Muslim men throughout the eastern Mediterranean region either as a separate headgear or as the inner part of the turban. 2. Abu Qada Abu Qada is an actual street in Cairo, Egypt, located near an elementary school. 3. Unmarred Unmarred means without damage. Other words for this are unblemished or perfect, undamaged, flawless, unbroken, intact, uninjured, unimpaired, unmutilated, or unharmed. 4. Francs. Francs is a large, densely packed crowd of people or even animals. 5. Conjuring. You might think of the horror film, but actually, conjuring means to make something appear by magic. Is the background of our author, Nagib Mafuz. He is a novelist, a playwright, and a screenwriter. He won Nobel Prize for Literature in 1988. He is also the first Arab writer to win the prestigious award and only the second from the African continent. He was born in Cairo, which is all we know located in Egypt and also a part of the African continent, in December 11, 1911. His works deal with some of life's fundamental questions, including the passage of time, society and norms, knowledge and faith, reason and love. He often uses his hometown of Cairo as the backdrop for his stories and some of his early works are set in ancient Egypt. Lastly, Nagib Mefuse's body of work comprises more than 30 novels and 350 short stories, and many of his stories have been adapted for film. I hope you are all excited to hear the summary of the story. Well, here are some questions before we proceed. How did you feel about going to school when you were younger? Were you excited? Were you afraid? Were you reluctant? And what was your impression of school on your first day? Did you find the school just as you had imagined? When we were young, we might think school might be enjoying and some might think that it is also frightening. 
as a child, what was your view about your world? Were you excited to grow up? Why or why not? Now, here is the summary of Half a Day by Mary Miranda from SlideShare.net. The story begins with a little boy and his father. They were walking towards the boys' school for it was the boys' first day in school. He was nervous and afraid. He was convinced that there was nothing good about going to school. But his father urged him forward saying, Be a man. Today, you truly begin life. You will find me waiting for you when it is time to leave. The boy with hesitation entered the school. He met boys and girls there whom he did not know and who didn't know him but were curious about him. After the gates closed, the children started crying. Then a lady or the teacher came in and arranged the children into classes saying, This is your new home! Dry your tears and face life joyfully! The children then have accepted the fact that they were to stay there for the rest of the day. And with this acceptance came contentment for the boy made new friends. He fell in love with girls, he played different games, sang songs, learned about language, learned about the world and religion, he ate food, took a nap, and woke up to do all the same joyful things. But then, the boy realized that the path of school was not always happy. There were bumps on the road like pain, hatred, fighting, heartbreak, and even the teacher who would scowl and scold and would resort to physical punishment. The boy learned that he and his friends should be careful as they go on their journey through school. When the bell rang, it signaled the end of the day. He bid farewell to his friends and sweethearts and waited for his father to pick him up, but he did not show up. So, the boy decided to go home on his own. After a few steps, he stopped. He was shocked because the entire place had changed. There were cars and high buildings everywhere. The gardens and fields have disappeared. Trucks with security troops were crawling the area. Circus people and conjurers were showing tricks and performing. A fire engine was causing traffic. The boy felt like he was going crazy. He said, How could all this happen in half a day between early and morning and sunset? He then decided to seek the answers from his father. So he needed to get home, but where was home? The boy wondered. He then hurriedly made it to the crossroads. He needed to cross Avocada to get home, but how could he cross when a line of cars would not let him? He was extremely irritated as he waited and wondered when will he be able to cross. Then after a long time of waiting, a young boy who worked at the ironing shop from the corner came up to him and stretched his arm and said, Grandpa, let me take you across. The short story reflects on how fast and quick time passes. Yesterday we were little children, today we are teenagers and tomorrow we will be old people. Nowadays, the hours of a day seem to be moving too fast and we do not even notice. Most of us wish for hours to be shorter, but when the day passes, we wish for longer hours. Sometimes, we may not be grateful and appreciative for the minutes we are given every day. We are lucky that we are given time to do things and be better because for some people, they don't have enough time. We want to grow up already and be adults. But when we do reach the adulthood, we long for our childhood days. The theme of the story tells us to cherish every moment, every week, every minute, every second, every hour, every day, every month, and every year 
because time is not something we can get back. It is not a file that, once deleted, cannot be restored from the recycle bin. We need to make each moment count, so we must live for today. And as it is said, you only live once. Another lesson is related to school. Wherein the school is not just a place where we learn about reading, writing, or a place where our parents can put us into so they have nothing to take care of inside the house. But it is a place where we are being prepared for life. We are taught to work under pressure and meet deadlines. We learn how to deal with people. We experience pain, even heartbreaks happiness and success and many more now here is our food for thought or the things that we might have learned from the story first we often think that life is too slow think again life is actually passing by so quick and we don't even see it so live for today in order for a person to learn the person must have the willingness to learn without it a person simply just takes education and learning for granted. So let us be grateful. So that's all. You're awesome. Hopefully, you completed watching the video. Now, please check your Google Classroom for a simple post activity. Please submit it or please turn it in on time.